Hello, friends. Welcome back to the Say What Podcast. My name is Hannah, and on this podcast, we talk about things that people don't want to say out loud. And if you guys could just give me like a quick like and subscribe on YouTube, that would help so much. I just discovered a lot of analytics on my YouTube that make me a little uncomfortable, and we can talk about that later. And so I just need I need more good people liking my YouTube and being a part of that um, rather than some other things that I discovered. But that's beside the point. My husband keeps telling me I have to talk about YouTube at the beginning of the podcast, so... I'm listening to him. Uh, but that doesn't matter anymore because I'm really excited to have our guest on today. We have Kristen Lamont, and I think I just said your last name wrong. Did you I did say it wrong? It wrong. Oh, perfect. It. I'm always in my head about it. Um, and we've been following each other on Instagram for a while now. I feel like we've been Instagram friends for, for a good amount of time. And I just absolutely love your content. Everything you put out there is so good, so relatable. We're in the same space. We'd like to talk about sex. We'd like to talk about things for the girlies. And we just had to come on and talk about purity culture because you've been talking about purity culture a lot uh, lately. I mean, you've, you've talked about sex for a long time, but you've talked about purity culture a lot lately on your Instagram. And I just love like reading everybody's experiences and stories and just the stuff you put out there is so great. And so I'm so excited to have you today on the podcast. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited too. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting space on the internet to be like a Christ follower and talk about something that everyone deems as like disgusting and nasty. Right. But, um, yeah, it's been really interesting, like, kind of going into that realm of like, I grew up this way. And like, you know, it's probably mm-hmm. surprising to hear me talk like this because of how I was raised. But like, here we are. And, but here yeah. we are talking about the details of sex on the internet. It's yeah. like, it tried to help out all the people. And it's so much deeper than that. You know, it's so much more than just like, talking about, you know, fun things on the internet. It's like helping other people feel less alone and educating people. Because if you grew up in purity culture, you have a negative, like three education when it comes to sex, you know, yeah. like <laughs> no one, no one knows anything. You're so just like, what is this? What does this part body part do? Like, I don't know, you know, it's just Literally. like, where does it go? Where you have multiple holes, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, yeah. no one knows anything. And so it's so important to be like talking about this stuff on the internet, yeah. but you're right. It is a very weird space to be a Christ follower as well. Yeah. Well, what yeah, started it was like, I started hearing from my friends. So I'm like, let's just dive in. Like, yeah, no, we're diving in. Let's go for it. Yeah. Cause I'm someone that has like a very like high sex drive. And Mm -hmm. so what started was like when we got married and I didn't really know like how to navigate stuff, I started Mm -hmm. like trying to talk to my other married friends about it. And something that I learned was that most of them didn't like having sex. And so I just kind of felt like weird, like, (laughs) wait a minute. (laughs) Yeah. So I just kind of like stayed to myself about it for a while of like that I'm a woman with high sex drive. I've never heard anyone else say that. Yes. And so, yeah, I just started, like, making jokes on the internet. Then come to find out, like, okay, no, and this is, like, my story. Everything I start sharing on the internet, other people help me feel less alone in it. I'm like, yes. okay, cool, okay, it's not abnormal. It's not just me. Yeah. yeah. Other women like having sex. And then it kind of opened my eyes, like, man, that makes me really sad. Like, why don't they enjoy sex? Like, I wonder what's going on. And right. obviously, like, this – my biggest thing that I would say is like, there's not one size fits all answer for this because it is such like a complex thing for each person. But if I can reach those girls who just don't know about their like anatomy or like, Mm -hmm. know how to communicate their needs, like maybe for them, I could help them. Like, you know, I'm not therapist. I can't break down the past trauma and stuff like that, but something like this, like, yeah. Hey, you know that you have like, a, like a G spot and right, right, yeah. I know, like you have a spot in your body that's like meant for pleasure, and if you like find it, it's like the greatest thing in the entire world. Yes. You know, but for someone who was raised without ever talking about like anything, like I think right, the furthest I got was like how to put a tampon in. Mm, yeah, <laughs> and even that, yeah. like I thought it went straight up. Like, nope, it goes angled backwards. I thought I was weird for that. <laughs> <laughs> right, and it's like no. I mean, these are just things that you don't like. You don't, you aren't talked about. Did you ever get the book, The Caring Keeping of You? Did you ever have that book growing up? No. Have you heard anything about it? No. No. Okay. It's like this, uh, in some of the circles I've been in talking about like education and not knowing anything about your bodies, a lot of us been given this book. I think it's, a, I think it's an American Girl Doll book actually. And it's oh. called The Care and Keeping of You. And it's basically just like talks about your body, the anatomy, how to, it's literally like how to, you know, shave, how to take care of your hair. Like what about your vagina? What about your vulva? Like it literally just kind of goes into all of that. But a lot of parents just like gave this book and was like, good luck. Hope you can figure it out. And like, didn't say anything. Like I remember being a 
young girl and being like, oh my gosh, there's boobs in this book. Like there's <laughs> literally nipples. And like, it, there's a whole like diagram of like different sizes to like what your boobs could look like, which I think is like really great. I haven't looked at the book in a long time. I remember it being more of a positive thing, like the book itself not being like a negative thing. But a lot of people have said their their parents just literally was like, here's the book. Like, hope you can figure it out. Like that's the most sex education I ever got. And I don't even know that the book talks about actual sex it just mostly talks about your body but it definitely doesn't have any like details like your clitoris or your g-spot or anything like that (laughs) it's meant for like 13 year olds to read but i just know a lot of people have been like given that book and it's like that's the only kind of education you get about your body and hope it works hope it's all good um i feel like i I need that i feel like i need that now and i know that, that's like my mindset too, like on sharing stuff. Cause I'm like, I'm learning at the same time. Like we're all learning together. All learning I, together. Yeah. Like I'm still on the journey. I'm still like the girl that was raised in purity culture. Like I've been married, I think it's about, or it was just seven years, but like, wow. I'm, we're still like learning each other and like, you know totally. what I mean? So totally. gonna, you know, you're still discovering things that you didn't realize you liked and finding out new stuff. Like I feel yeah. like we've been in a season like that. We're like, Oh, this is fun. Had no idea we could do this. Or we didn't know I liked that. And we've been married for five years now. And you would think, you know, I feel like some people are like, Oh, you just figure it out so fast. And it's like, no, 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 no. It takes so much time. The one thing I heard somebody say one time is sex is a skill. And I was like, that is so true. And you just totally like your skills just get better and better and better as you go. Like, it's not something you just like, know how to do instantly and it's like an instinct you know it takes some time sometimes to like figure it out and a lot of us don't know how to (laughs) figure it out you know I don't know where to look too I don't know if like you've seen that in your community of people being like I don't want to google this because I feel kind of weird about it but I want to know my like you said your friends are like yeah I don't really like sex so like I don't have any help for you. So they also feel just like, where do I look for this information? So that's why it's good that like profiles like ours are out there. You know, they can find it. Totally. Totally. <laughs> in a um, safe space. I was going to say, oh, I just posted this the other day and it got a lot of reaction of like, th- that is why I think like monogamy is like the sexiest relationship you could be in like a long term mm-hmm. like marriage because people like the rap that it gets is that it's like boring and like mm-hmm. all like the bachelorette parties and stuff. It's like same penis, same for the penis rest forever. Of the yeah. Yeah. But I'm like, no, like you're gonna like learn how to love each other. Like you yes. learn the ins and outs of each other and have like this depth to, to the relationship. Like, I feel like it's the hottest like sex you could ever have. Oh, absolutely. No, I mean, th- you can get so like deep and learn so many things over so long and people change too. And things that you like can change based on your season or new things that you try or whatever. So it's like, it can just only get better and better as it goes. And how exciting is that? Like, I completely agree with you. Like how fun and sexy is that, that like you get to know, cause sex is so not just physical, it's so emotional, you know? And so it's yeah. like the deeper you go, the deeper you get emotional the more vulnerable you get like the better it gets I don't know why well I don't know why you would get like mean comments about that but it's the internet so you know people would people will say anything you know yeah what we see in movies and stuff is like the normal like it it makes it look so like hot and spicy to meet someone Mm -hmm. like have a fling but yeah yeah, I think too the other I was pondering like recently the like turn-ons for me have changed over the years yeah totally now I'm like, wow, the fact that you like work so hard and like, you know, take care and provide everything that we right. need for family, like so hot. Like, yeah, are like that's beyond. the best thing that's ever happened. Yeah. Seeing your husband play with, their, with, with your kids, it's like never knew that that was going to be the thing for me. Like, wow. I mean, I had like, you know, ideas of like, oh, I'm sure I'll like that. And it's like, oh no, seeing that he was like kind of compassionate to, towards our kid and like did something really cool. I'm like, mm that's it. I'm yeah. like, we're go- we're doing stuff tonight. That was awesome. You we're know doing I mean? stuff tonight. <laughs> like, um, it's happening. Totally. I, I, I was like trying to save my thoughts too. Cause I feel like I, like I have so much stuff that I've Oh, no, this is just, we're just having a conversation. (laughs) Forget an outline. We're just having a conversation. Because something I did want to ask you about is since you did grow up in purity culture and you said you were uh, like had a high sex drive, did you ever feel like ashamed by that? Because I know in my experience, I feel like women were always labeled if you do have a high sex drive as like a slut or a whore, which I hate those terms anyway, because it's like, I don't feel like those necessarily exist. Like men can also do slut quote, slut and whorish things, but they're never labeled that. It's just a thing to degrade women. But I always remember thinking, like, hearing about women with high sex drives is, like, labeled as something, like, bad. And so when I got married and I had a high sex drive, I was kind of like, is that okay? Like, I don't know. I just kind of felt, like, weird about it. Did you ever experience that? 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think the extent of my um, purity culture, like training was don't do it. It's bad. If you yeah. do it, like you, like you, you'll feel so much shame. So right. struggling with purity before I got married that, oh my gosh, yeah. the shame was so heavy, like so oh, I heavy. Believe it. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, I just always felt shame and bad. And it was like this constant mm -hmm. struggle of trying to not do anything and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, I wish that someone would have just talked to me, explained hormones, explain mm, yeah. more. I'm such like a learner that if you just sit down and like eye to eye and talk to me, like I yeah. will hear and I will understand. But it was like this taboo thing of like, we like, just don't talk about it. Yeah. And if I catch you, like your life is over. Oh and my so gosh. It, yes. That's so real. Yeah. So it just felt like so heavy, so secretive. Um, I just wish that someone would have talked to me and just explained that it's like normal to feel those things. And totally. Yeah, so definitely. And there's nothing wrong with you. Like, that's part of being a human. Like, God created us, and part of when he created us was to be sexual beings. I mean, he gave us literally parts in our body that experience pleasure, and that's the purpose of it. If he didn't care about us being sexual beings and we were supposed to just, like, reproduce kids, let that be the end of it, he wouldn't have given us those, like, body parts to enjoy it, you know? Like, yeah. it's a beautiful thing. And anytime the church is, like, talked about sex, it was in such a negative light, I feel like. Like, it was just always so bad, and it's like – that's not gonna that scared me away from it but that doesn't always work too you know like it made it really terrible like things would have been so much better if i had such a more positive view on sex it wouldn't have been painful for me personally but right. you know that's just where we're at so let's talk a little bit about how like the kind of purity culture you grew up in like what messages did you hear were you super involved in church like what was that like for you okay um i was gonna say so i grew up in like a really strict church that my like dad was raised in and then around, like, it was, I think I was almost in junior high, they started mm -hmm. actually getting, like, a little bit racist. And so my Ooh. family ended up realizing, oh, wow, like, it was the type of church where, like, the women were required to wear dresses. Um, like, oh, wow. Okay. Very intense. But, um, yeah. and also, if you step away from that church, you're not saved anymore. And so <gasps> it's like this whole Oh, my thing. gosh. Yeah, yeah. Very heavy for my dad. Because yeah. what he was raising, they're so part, well, anyways, so, um. We ended up, it was like one random Sunday. My mom was sick and my dad was like, like, okay, am I going to go left to this church or am I going to go right yeah. to this church that I've heard about? I'm going to check out. He ended up just like randomly checking it out. We walked in, people were like raising their hands, worshiping. Mm. The other church believed like no instruments were allowed, that those were like uh, yeah. evil. And so all of us are like shell shocked and they're just like, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> this is yeah. I'm sure like girls were not wearing all like dresses or like knee length skirts. I'm sure they're like, hair was cut and you know wearing whatever <laughs> <laughs> I, f I didn't grow up in that but I feel like that's always a like an association is you can't cut your hair I don't know if that's what you grew up in but I feel like I hear about people saying that I think but. I got out just in time I missed that <laughs> nice <laughs> yeah yeah but it's really crazy because that day like him literally turned the other way like changed the trajectory of like my family's life so wow thankfully I think we got out in time see my sister's older and I don't want to share too much of like her um experience but mm. she was in there longer so she I saw yeah. a lot of the stuff like um, she had the purity ring because she went to that like mm. conference and things like that. Yep. Mine was more of the extent of just like um, in my home and I mm. think mm -hmm. and in the church and I've had like the pastor come up and say like your shorts are too short and things like that. Which is but so like bizarre. I'm like you are a male looking at me and telling me my shorts are too short. Like absolutely not. Yeah. That is just, I'm like, do you not see how weird that is? That like, you're coming to me, a young girl talking to me about my shorts. Like, is that because you are stumbling and like, you're having a problem with that? Like, that's really gross. Anyways. <laughs> really, really gross. Yeah. Thankfully, this church that I was in is like a solid church. Like it's still like, we, we moved recently and we've been checking out other churches and like my husband and I are both like, wow, like that church, like everything that they talk about is just so like biblically sound and, mm -hmm. um, it, it's not how that other one was so yeah luckily like I spent most of my time there and um it was really good I think it was like the lack of the education is my biggest takeaway from mm -hmm. everything thankfully I wasn't like shamed yeah. too much into feeling body shame but stepping yeah. into that area of the internet like all these stories and everything mm -hmm. so that's kind of why I've been um touching on it so that's yeah. kind of, of my experience 
did your like did you have any kind of sex education at all or was it just like don't have sex like what was it like in your home like were your parents talking about sex was it just like a don't do it like what was that like not a peep about sex like yeah <laughs> don't do it like yeah. literally nothing I yeah I'm like, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know how much to share I'm like the lack of knowledge like I didn't know like <laughs> I, oh, I didn't into- learn what a vulva was until I was probably like 23 like honestly like I did yeah. not know vulva was a was a term in my body like for my body so yeah. I get it it's fine <laughs> I don't know how anything worked I'm like I didn't even have the American Girls all book so that's where I was <laughs> right. picture you without the American Girls all book I was like yeah. does everyone's vagina look like this like, like- <laughs> you know what I mean right. Right. It's yeah. like you could have actually really benefited from the American Girl Doll book. I think like. I'm gonna I think I'm gonna order it after this. Yeah, yeah. No, I need to find it. We need to see if it's still out there. I'm sure it's still out there. I I've been thinking about how I need to get that book just so I can like bring back all the memories from it and I'll send you one. You know, you need to have the book <laughs> so you can give away. Yes, that's how that's our joint giveaway right there. Is like we give away the American Girl Doll book hey, go and our favorite vibrators. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy vibrators on the internet yeah that was another thing yeah. like um my first collaboration with like a vibrator company I mm-hmm. I hadn't used one and so I like texted my mom and my sister because I was still like tiptoeing of like and um it's just what it's like they look at that as I don't know as like evil I'm like you can use it with yeah. your spouse like I'm not like <laughs> right I'm not just it- out here using it on my own, just having fun, you know, like it's a way to connect. I like to say that like sex toys elevate, they don't replace, like they just elevate your experience. Cause it's not just for like you to use, like you can use it on your husband. He can use it on you. You know, it's a whole thing that you're doing together and it makes it a lot more fun. And a lot of women who can't experience orgasm and once they get a vibrator, they're actually able to do that. And it helps them just learn more about their body and see, cause I I feel like some people have said like, I don't know if I've experienced it or not. And so I think getting a vibrator can help them, you know, like, cause one, once you experience it, I feel like you're like, oh, okay, that feels like that's what that was supposed to feel like. Totally. And vibrator totally. can help that, you know? I know that some people, like you were saying with sex toys, like feel like it's a bad thing. And it's like in scripture, it says like nothing is defiled in the marriage, like bedroom. And so I'm like, feel like that goes under that. Like it's totally fine. As long as both people are comfortable with it, there's literally nothing wrong with that. I mean, obviously I'm never going to tell somebody to use a sex toy if they're not comfortable with it. Like there, that is absolutely like top importance is that you are both comfortable with it. So I'm never like going to force that on somebody, but if they're curious about it, I don't want them to feel like it's a sin or anything. You know, if someone's convicted about something, absolutely follow that conviction. But if it's just, you're like, well, I felt like this was maybe bad, but I don't really know. I'm like, okay, let's explore this a little bit, you know, figure out where those thoughts are coming from. It's a good thing. I think I even, if, if they wouldn't have sent it to me, I think I would have been too nervous to order it. I think I would have felt like too afraid and too ashamed, but the second I got it and I just like, so Shane, I was like, so I have this, like, or he knew I was right. getting it, but I was like, so here it is. Right. Like, do you want to try and use it on me? And like, yeah. that was kind of like the introduction. And like you said, like following your own convictions, like mm-hmm. if you're not comfortable, like that's not going to make anything better if you're like, totally. I'm not supposed to use this, but yeah. yeah. Kind of is, the, right. is it the mod one that you guys use? Yeah. So that was my first one. Um, and then I, realize that I like the exterior ones more. Like I don't really uh-huh. care for like, the interior ones. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah, I don't really care for the interior ones. I don't I don't the- know if I've ever used an interior one, but I've never like thought about trying. Yeah, I haven't used I've never but I've like no again, no shame if anybody has. That's just like not I me. Mean, I'd prefer an exterior one too. Yeah, but. see it's crazy how it's like there's even like different ones and kind of oh. everyone thinks of like girthy three thousand. <laughs> <But, like, laughs> right. Which like right. Doing the most recent thing that I did, like exploring the website, I was like, "Woo, wow, yeah, no, totally." There I are some things, though. There are some things out there. I'm like, I had no idea that could have it and that could exist. And again, no shame. You do what you're comfortable with, but I'm like, I that is just not for me. That is just not for me. We're just gonna keep it, just we're what we're doing. <laughs> We're purity culture girls. We're tiptoeing in. <laughs> yes, we're we're purity culture girls. We're tiptoeing in. That is that is so true. That is so true. So when did you start like learning about sex? You said the education part was a big thing for you, like not knowing anything about it. So before, like when you started having having sex, like is that something that you like looked it up, or did you just like how did you even learn? Did, were you just like one day like you're like I guess I don't know what my body is. I'm gonna learn it. Like what well, what what was that journey like for you? Okay. I'm like, so here's the thing. So we talked about like kids getting exposed, like we about the American girl doll book and stuff. Mm-hmm. I have like a quick little story that like opened yeah. my eyes. 
because now I'm parenting two kids. I have a five-year-old son. I didn't even say that. I didn't even say that. <laughs> <laughs> your, our, your kids are the best, so we got to talk about them. Oh, okay. So I'm in Southern California. I have two babies. Um, we mm-hmm. live by a lake. So like all we do is like fish and we ride our golf Amazing. cart around and my son's five and my daughter is one. Um, and our both- kids are, are your daughter and my son are like close in age. I think they're like only a couple days apart, right? When's our birthday? Uh, the 31st. Okay. Tate's is the 25th. Yeah. So they're literally just like a few days apart, which is so cute. So cute. Yeah. I feel like that's yeah. when we really bonded. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we realized we had kids the same age. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I had an incident where we were like at a park and there was like a little boy that was like six or seven and I'm literally, it's like a dirt track around this park and I'm walking and Oliver's in the middle of the dirt tracks, like within arms reach me. And there's like a big storm drain. And I hear the little boy go like, it is in there. Can you see his eyes? Like look in the storm drain. And I'm like, okay, Oliver, like time to yeah. go. Like that's the stuff right. that petrifies a kid for years. Totally. And in, that, in that moment, I was like, wow, our kids are going to expo- be exposed to so much before we even think, because yeah. who knows what, who, I never thought a little boy would be watching it. Like, right. I, I, you oh know, gosh. I didn't know a little boy that age would know what that was, which yeah. leads me to like, they're going to learn about body parts and they're going to totally. learn about sex and they're going to learn about not sex as much, but and right. body parts and definitely be exposed to things that we probably don't expect. Cause also we didn't grow up in this era of six year olds have iPads with unlimited oh access gosh. to the internet. Yeah. So insane, actually scary, yeah. really scary. Um, totally. I'm, I get scared by stuff on the internet. I can't imagine. Being oh, scared. I know. No, <laughs> same. Yeah, no, absolutely. So just like having, open dialect in our house like Mm -hmm. if Oliver sees my period cup he's like what's that I'm like oh this goes in my vagina because I have an organ in here that sheds every month if I don't have a Mm -hmm. baby like and I just like have this goal of it just being like this is just our body and it's not gross and it's not taboo and this is just how it works Um, totally so that's my current goal uh so I didn't have that and my exposure was from boys like if I'm honest Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, no, t- mine was too. Mine, mine absolutely was too. Yep. Yeah, which is stinky. <laughs> and yeah, also, yeah. Like, I don't really ever talk about this, but um, yeah, so it was like, I just learned by, I dated two boys like lightly before my husband. And luckily, I wasn't with either of them um, like all the way, but like, I was pressured. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, yeah. yeah I, he told me, he's like, just one time. Let's, and I'm like, oh. <sighs> First of no. all, what you're talking about. <laughs> right. Well, what do you mean one time? What are we going to do one time? <laughs> Just beauty girls or girlies. Like, what, is, what does that mean? I had an idea. And that was another thing. I had never been exposed to, like, porn. Like, so also, I'm sorry, jumping around. But hey, with fun. lacking the education, I was also protected from so much. Yeah. And yeah. I'm so thankful for that. I think I'd rather totally. figure it out this way than figure right. it out. That way exposed and absolutely no I completely agree yeah that is like a true benefit to that is that like you weren't exposed to any of that stuff and praise the Lord for that like truly absolutely yeah I my parents were so on it I wasn't even like in a house where those kids were exposed to poor. like my parents were so mm-hmm. diligent in whose house I was left in no like sleepovers yeah. and all this stuff so um yeah I I had never even seen like porn so I didn't know yeah anything I don't think I haven't watched a movie where like you saw any details so just um dating those two boys lightly like was like my first step I didn't know that like boys like finished or anything like until I was with my husband I'm like those poor boys (laughs) yeah you know it's fine it's fine it's okay you just you know just again purity culture just purity culture girlies not knowing anything yeah and so thankfully like I learned everything with Shane which is yeah, such a blessing and saved me from so much heartache. So, yeah, no, totally, I mean, totally. And I, I, com- I completely get it. It's like I was the girl who was like, I'll do everything but have sex with you because then the world will come crashing down and I'll get pregnant and go to hell. Like, that's literally what I thought. I was like, the very first time you have sex, you're going to get pregnant. I, because I obviously knew nothing about my body or how, I just knew I got a period. I wasn't even ever tracking my periods. I was just like, oh, my period will come at some point. And when it comes, like, I guess I'll, I'll use my tampons for a few days and it'll be fine. Like, I just was so like 
not caring about it. I didn't know a single thing. I just, I was like, okay, because I also didn't have any sex education either. Like, I made my parents sign the paperwork that I didn't have to go to the class at school because I was like, this is weird and gross and I don't want to do it. And I don't know anything about this and I just, like, don't want to go. And so, like, I was the only one who, like, sat outside my sixth grade health class and, like, didn't go. But then my parents didn't tell me anything about it either. So, and again, like, they were, um, you know, they were doing the best that they could. But, it's just like, okay, no education. And I just kind of learned like you, like as I, as time went on, it was just like learning new things. Didn't even know the names of my body parts until I was way into adulthood, way into adulthood. Me and sometimes too. still I'm even like, wait, what is that one? Okay. I think I know yeah. what that is. I still feel like I don't even know the like guys parts. Like I was like, cause I really am like super, uh, I feel like it's super important to teach my son all the correct body parts. And so yeah. I was like called something the other day and I was like, wait, that's not, that's so not what it's called. <laughs> I was like, wait, I need to make sure I have this right. Um, and I actually have this book that I found online that's like very cute, like very my branding. And so I bought it for more of just like the say what branding, but it's a penis vagina book. And like one half of it is like everything about the penis, like very deep. And it's very cute. It's sort of like pink and green colored. And it's like very detailed of like, this is what this is called. And this is what this does. Like, it's not weird or gross by anything. It's just like an anatomical book, but so it's not like really pink. cute. I know. I know. I need to, I need to post about it. It's really cute. And so I literally went and picked up that book the other day and I was like, oh, that's what that is. Like, I, I definitely have a lot of learning to do on the male side. So I'm like, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty confident in mine, but I'm like, I don't know the proper names of the boys. And I need to know that considering I'm raising a son and I need to <laughs> give him the correct terms of his body parts because just talking about it, like the way that you're saying, you're just like talking about like, oh, this is what my, my body does. It just helps like eliminate shame because when things are kept in the dark and you're not talking about it so much shame, it's just bred there. And so just making it a casual conversation and just something that he just, if he has questions about you, you answer, it just makes it so casual and not like hush hushed and taboo. And we have to keep it quiet. We can't talk about it, you know? And so cool. it's like so important to help remove that shame, you know? Yeah. Well, even just like yeah. having a daughter now and an older son, mm -hmm you know, he sees her diaper change or if like, you know, I get dressed really quick and I can see him kind of thinking, I just, I'm like, do you have any questions? Like, yeah, do you want to know anything? And he usually asks and I'm like, yes, That's like, awesome. let's That's start so good that he feels like comfortable enough. I know he's still young, but just that he is like wanting to ask questions. Cause of course he sees his sister who has a very different body than him. And so he's like, I don't understand what that means, you know? So that's yeah. so good that like he'll ask those questions and you guys will talk about it. Yeah. Also a big lesson on, um, teaching them, like what parts are like the private parts. Yes. Um, like yes. for any parents out there, we teach him. I'm like, before he goes like anywhere, I'm like, okay, where are your private parts? Your mouth, your hands, your butt, and your penis are your private parts. Mm -hmm. And like, no one should be touching that. And I even tell mm -hmm. him like, even mommy uses a wipe to touch it. We don't use like, you know, no one should be having their fingers or right. mouth, anything, anywhere near those private parts. And Right. And he'll like repeat them back to me and stuff. Anyways, that's no, that's such a good tip. Like, that's so good. Like making sure that you talk about that before you go anywhere is huge. It's huge because also kids are so young and naive. They don't necessarily, unless you're telling them like what is good touch and bad touch, they don't know what's appropriate and what's not. And so it's so good for you to be like telling him that, and that can really help prevent um, any kind of assault that could happen. So it's very important. Totally. Yeah, and, we and that he would, like, know what it is to tell you, too, because, like, it may happen. Like, that's why I'm, I tell people all the time that we don't need to call, like, <clears throat> excuse me, call a vagina, like, a cookie. Like, I know some, I've heard cookie, which is, like, so just, ugh, I don't like that. It's worse than calling it a vagina. But, like, if your kid comes to you and says, like, oh, he, like, wanted to touch my cookie like, or, like, wanted to give me a cookie, like, what if they had cookies at lunch? The parent's not going to know any different, you know? And so it's so totally. important to, like, teach those actual terms, you know? Yeah. And like, I, vagina, like, isn't a gross word. Like, no, it's, made, it's just a body. It's like the same as your knee that like, it's right. just a body. Um, totally. And, it's just a body part. Yeah. Also like telling him like his safe people, like he knows, like mm -hmm. pretty much like his grandmas are the only ones that like wipe his, you know, private. Anyways, right. um, yeah. you were, you were talking about before the doing anything, but and like mm -hmm. on my Instagram recently, I learned about, um, is the poop hole loophole. <laughs> Yes. Yes. The poop hole loophole because it's not in your vagina. So people will do yeah. that because they think that that may, you know, that that's not having sex. Right. And which we like, you know, giggle about, but like, it's really sad. Mm -hmm. It's so sad. Like the shame yes. um, that leads people to the extent of like, oh, it's just so heavy. It's so heavy. And yes. it's still something that I'm like learning because I, I agree that having sex before marriage leads to like more heartache and Mm -hmm. very like heavier problems 
Um, but it is a really hard thing to navigate of. Oh, it's the hardest thing. It's the hardest thing. And there should seriously be so much more grace given than what's given. I mean, the conversations of like, you'll never be the same and no one's going to ever want you. And all this is just so shame. And it's like people who are telling these teenagers that forget and young adults just forget how really, truly difficult this is. Like your hormones are changing. You're just, your, you know, brain isn't developed. And so you're wanting to do all these things and stuff happens and there's so much shame around it. And there's just not enough grace given to you know, teenagers and adults for this stuff. Like it's truly so hard. So we need to like acknowledge that, you know? (laughs) Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Um, what has like been some things that has like helped you overcome like purity culture and these beliefs? I mean, and it sounds like your husband has been like a great resource, a really safe person to like learn these things with, but like, what are some things, I mean, obviously going to that other church, like really kind of helped shift what you had learned as a kid, but like, what are some things that you, you know, it kind of helped you overcome this. Um, I like think beliefs. I had um, I had one friend who was like to- gave me a one liner before we got married, and it was uh, it was just simple. This literally isn't this sad. This is like I don't even think we talked about it in premarital counseling. Like I don't even think mm-hmm. there was a lesson. But my one friend like said a silly thing that um, like sex isn't going to be what you see in the movies. There's there's going to be like body farts, and there's going to be like whatever. It's not yep. going to be. What- thought it was um but I think like that one liner just her open honesty was like what I was craving so much so while while now I'm married and navigating it with Shane I kept thinking Mm -hmm. back to that of like yeah like it isn't like and it just kind of opened up like the movies in so many ways right it just kind of opened my mind to like um like real talk about it and I really feel like talking about it online and like figuring it out with my husband and then mm-hmm. the great sex rescue by Sheila Gregory. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like, she is great. Those like things are the things that kind of like blossomed my mind. If that mm-hmm. makes sense. Yeah. Her book. Oh, absolutely. Her book's so good. Like, yes. I love how she brings the attention to like the kind of the harmful things that are in a lot of marital books. Like we were given mm-hmm. a lot of those marital books and yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if that answered your question correctly. No, it definitely did. I mean, I think that just people talking about it in that way is so helpful. And because it's so true, like in the movies, they both finish at the same time. The girl's body always looks exactly perfect the way it should. You know, they're making all the same sounds at the same time. You know, it's so hot and sexy and all the things. And it's like, sometimes it can be like that. Sure. That's awesome. But so many times it's not like that. And then your body, like you said, is going to make a sound or you're going to do this like weird thing thing that you didn't like and you're like oh but you didn't like that like it's just so not like the movies in so many ways and it's so helpful to understand like sex can be like fun and a good time and not just so like put on this pedestal you know of, yeah like, that it has to be perfect you know yeah. and that you have to be perfect at it yeah oh I was gonna say too like my my biggest thing is like um my brain's getting screwed but just my heart like what I what I really want when I'm sharing is um, to open women's eyes up to like having a voice in the bedroom and mm, um, yes, I'm sorry. I'm getting jumbled on my words. I feel like I have so no. many thoughts. I'm like, you're so- totally good. Okay. Okay. Let me gather my thoughts really quick. Um, where did I want to go with that? <laughs> no, it's okay. We could talk about the initiating. I would love to talk about like tips for initiating and then like having a voice in the bedroom like how to speak up that is definitely some stuff it's probably where you were going I guess yeah like even along the lines of like um at different times in the month like your uterus is going to be like tilted a different way and like your cervix Mm -hmm. is going to be lower and higher and like things like that like because I remember in the beginning of our relationship when we were married it'd be like why do I like feel more passionate at this time and I didn't even know like about yeah I didn't even know that when you were ovulating, you had a higher sex drive. Like, it's so right. sucky. Um, I almost wish we could just do a podcast all on, like, that stuff. Of, like, I know. I know. No, we definitely can. I'll have to have you back on, and we can talk about that for sure. Because there's so many things that you just, like, don't know going into it, you know? Yeah, like, um, what you and- wish you knew. We should do that. Like, what you wish totally. you knew going into it. Yes, what you wish you knew. And, like, I think um, I love what you were saying about how- wanting women to have a voice in the bedroom. Because – 
you know, with purity culture, it's sex was always focused on the man and, you know, making sure you please him. Like you would hear the messages of like, if you aren't having sex with him, he's going to leave and find it somewhere else. You know, you have to be like the perfect, you know, doll basically for him to have sex with and make sure, you know, his wedding night is perfect. And there was this like one clip going around where the pastor was like, you have to make sure wherever, whatever your husband wants for his wedding night, you do that. Like you just stand here and do what he says and do everything that he wants because he's been waiting for this his whole life. And it's like, um, so oh have I? Gosh. Yeah, no, it's insane. I did, I have not watched the full clip from that mess or from that sermon because they took it off the internet. Um, but I would love to watch it. But just the clips going around, I was like, this is actually insane. Like, yeah, even if you were joking, it's not a funny joke. Like, no. nothing about that is funny to me. And it, your message didn't need to say that. But that's so wrong in so many ways that women are not just dolls for men to play with. And also, we have been waiting for all are our lives for have sex too i'm like again women have high sex drives it's totally fine like it's for yeah. a woman to enjoy as well um but what you were saying about like trying to give women a voice in the bedroom what are some of your like tips for like initiating sex because i know it can feel so just like it's for him i don't really know what to do but i also enjoy it so i don't really know like i'm feeling kind of nervous like i keep thinking about your um, reel that you posted like i'm like, like recently where you were like walking out of the bedroom and you're like me trying to like <laughs> you know be sexy in my laundry i remember it was lingerie or whatever but you were yeah. like walking awkwardly of like trying to initiate sex i'm like that is so real like i think about bella in the one of the twilight movies i don't know if you've seen those but like yeah. she's like standing <laughs> like at their honeymoon like trying to stand by the door just being so awkward I'm I'm like that is all of us I felt like especially those pretty culture girls like that is all of us trying to trying to initiate trying to say anything in the bedroom so like oh, what yeah. are some of your tips for that because we need yeah. them I'm a, I'm awkward like I wasn't I was I played soccer my whole life like I feel like mm. the girls who did dance know how to move their bodies a bit more confidently <laughs> yeah. I'm someone commented I'm a, a breadstick I'm like yes <laughs> I am a breadstick. I'm, a breadstick. <laughs> I'm screaming. But I think too, like, um, I'm not gonna come out and be like all ever. That's right. not that's not my personality. And you know, that's why my husband loves me. <laughs> he didn't right. want Right, right, yeah. He didn't want that. I mean, we get that way when um the blood starts flowing, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, it, totally, totally. It can yeah. evolve to that, but it might not start out that way, you know. Absolutely. And each night is different. Sometimes you have oh. the night, sometimes right. you have the uh you know, slower love and uh, right. it's different styles. Right, it's just fine. Yeah, yeah. Different yeah. fonts. No, right. so for initiating, I was like doing stories about this and I was like, I feel like actually men are so simple. <laughs> You don't have to do yeah. too much. <laughs> right. I feel like we overcomplicate it so much. You're so right. Men are so simple. Like we don't have to make it some big thing. I think too, like um, if you grew up hearing those books about like that it's all for men and men want it and and these men have never learned about properly like loving a woman and they don't know her anatomy and all this stuff. It's yes. really this like cycle of, um, they expect it. Mm -hmm. They think that they have to serve God by doing it. So then like, and then like, they're not feeling anything. They're not mm. feeling emotional connection. They're not feeling physical connection. So like, of course they're not going to want to do it. Right. And then they're like mad. And then it's just like this cycle, this like toxic yes. cycle of if the, if the man just, understood that like loving her every day all day like mm -hmm. showing her love in her language or whatever and if she did the same and then that if he initiated with foreplay and understood her mm -hmm. anatomy and understood her as a person like she'd want to totally totally yeah no absolutely it's it's more about the like lead up i feel like than it not then it's not more about it i should say but it's so important to have that you know loving you all day long and not just being like, you know, I didn't hang out with you and talk to you all day. Now I expect you to have sex with me. It's like, of course, she's not going to want to if you haven't acted like you loved her or said one thing to her, asked what was on her mind or even asked her how she was doing. It's yeah. like emotional connection is the hottest thing you can do to get you into the bedroom, in my opinion. Totally. I'm like, if you care about me, then we're going, you know? <laughs> totally, totally. And sometimes, obviously, the physical, too. Like, it definitely makes me feel good when Thomas is commenting on my, like, physical looks. Of course. Like, yeah. I do like to hear that, you know? Yeah. But it means a lot when he, like, asks about, you know, me and who I am and does things for us at our home or, like, takes something off my plate. You know, that really, like, sets me up for success. <laughs> yeah. The, like, the teammate, um, the teammate vibe yes. really gets me going. Like, Yes. being teammates in life. I'm like, yes, Absolutely. I love you. 
Yes, we are on the same team. And it's not just like you get to go to work and then I'm doing literally every single thing else at our home and it's not, quote, a job, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because it absolutely is. Everything that women are doing is a job. But So that's why I put that in quotes, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, just, yeah, that teammate, like, we're in this together. Like, everything mm-hmm. on our plate is, like, ours together. I that, Totally. That's, like, my favorite vibe and mindset to have in a relationship. Um, yes. But I love what you were saying about just, like, being yourself and, like, not trying to be something you're not. Because I agree, like, the movies make it all so, like, you have to be sexy, you have to have the right kind of lingerie, you have to say the right thing, you have to have the right kind of dirty talk. Like, I'm like, I couldn't tell you what you're supposed to say. I don't, I I have no idea. And I think finding, like, the, just being yourself, I think, is so key and not overcomplicating it. Like, that's such a, that's such a good advice because we just overcomplicate it so much. And your husband loves you for you and who you are and not trying to be someone else. Um, and I just think that's so good. Like, just being yourself, you're like, okay, if I'm a breadstick, then I'm a breadstick. I'm not trying to be anything, anything that's other than that. Stick. <laughs> no, you're like, that's just it, where I'm at right now. That's okay. Probably an olive garden breadstick. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it has to be an olive garden breadstick yeah. but you also probably can't eat an olive garden breadstick right because you're allergic to it. i'm allergic to everything but i do have some uh, garlic that. free or gluten-free garlic bread that i'm excited to okay. try anyways i was gonna say too um we were talking about and oh i really want to like encourage women to be the initiator yeah and kind of like flip the dynamic and see how Ooh, like yeah. they feel if if they kind of take charge every once in a while. Um, totally. And obviously in the right circumstance and everything, and like you have to want to, I don't want you to do it if you don't want to, but I would yeah, just yeah. love to like encourage women to, you know, I don't know. I think it's just fun yeah. sometimes to kind of like flip that narrative that we always hear and be like, no, like I'm going to initiate and like, <laughs> right. We're doing what I say tonight and you're going to do what I say because so many of it, and it's not like objectifying your spouse or anything. That's just part of the beautifulness of marriage and the beautifulness of sex with your, you know, with your spouse is like getting to do those things and be in those different roles together because it's a safe place, a safe, a safe environment. Like you, you guys know, we're not like saying anything crazy. I know I just made a comment about like, don't stand there and do what you mean, but that was like a negative connotation. This is like a positive, like you said, we're flipping the switch. Like we're taking control yeah, and we, how much fun that can be. Yeah. We've already had the conversations of consent. I'm like, I've already right. asked if I can touch his booty hole. Like it's fine. Right. And we're, we're doing it. It's okay. It's we're consent. trying it out. You know, I'm going to tell yeah. you what to do, but we've already had to talk about what's okay and what's not okay. <laughs> right. And this is okay. And I'm in charge tonight and we're trying this. And that's also, you know, flipping the switch is also helpful for girls to figure out what they like. Because so many of us, ha- like you said, with the G spot, you were talking about in your, um, like coconut, what's it called on Instagram? The, like the, not the group chat. Cause you, we can't respond, but whatever. Oh, the the, yes. The broadcast, like you were talking about. Um, just like showing like uh, where the G-spot is and trying to find your G-spot because so many women have no idea like what they like when it comes to sex. And like a lot of women have faked it because, again, purity culture tells us we're supposed to like, you know, do whatever our husbands want and make our husbands feel good. And so a lot of us have faked it. And then you get in the cycle of like, well, I've faked it for so long and now I don't really know how to get out of it. And so we have to start being like honest. And if you take control, that can really help you figure out what you like because that's yeah. important, you know. Yeah, Let's- Let's talk about that for a second because um yes. obviously like masturbation is um well in a lot of churches and a lot of religions and stuff you know it's looked down upon to do it by yourself and but i feel like people forget that you can do that together like you can together have yes. experience together of you know like literally just like sitting down and being like hey i'm really interested in like exploring can can we like even do this in like a casual way it's not even during like sex or something and be like Right. Um, I know sometimes the, for the G spot, you have to stimulate it before mm-hmm. for it to like feel the same way it would during sex. But like being like, okay, yeah. like I'm gonna lean back like this. Like, can you go in there and feel around? Yeah. And I'm gonna tell you, oh, right there, right there. And then like now, mm-hmm. let's mix in like my other erogenous zones and like let's explore this together. And then totally. Like studying the textbook before the test. (laughs) Absolutely. And sometimes it's also like you can't really – sometimes I feel like it's hard to verbalize. Like I like when your hand is right here. And so like just doing it or even finding that out yourself or saying like, well, you almost hit that or that pressure. So even doing it on your own but like while your spouse is there with you because they can be touching you, learning, watching, you know, and you're like, okay, this is – 
this pressure that I have right here feels really good. And so I don't even, I mean, I guess masturbation is probably the correct term for that, but it's like you're doing it together. So it's an experience you're having together, you know, and that's like a yeah. beautiful thing. And that's well, fine in my opinion, yeah. you know? And a lot of women thrive on top because they can control the tempo and they can control totally. like where it's hitting and everything. And then someone yeah. responded, I was talking about coconut because coconut's basically like, Yes, we have to talk about coconut. Oh, my gosh. You, like, took the internet by storm with coconut. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so it's just... tell us what coconut is, and, like, we just have to talk about it. Okay, so coconut is where, like, he's laying down, and you are straddling him on top. And basically what it is is, like, you're, like, moving around because Mm -hmm. that's helping hit, like, your points. And so these different, Uh like, letters, like the C... Um, mm-hmm. like if, if you really visualize it, like it's gonna, I'm like moving my hips right now. I know. <laughs> like if you go see, <laughs> I'm like, Monica, seven, seven. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Um, but like, you can feel it like hitting your G spot or like just hitting mm-hmm. different spots. And so that's all that is. Yeah. But someone responded and they're like, I wish my man would let me do this. Like he says, it feels good. Like tells me just to like start moving up and down. And I was like, oh my <sighs> God, I'm like no. so stressed. I'm like. Right. There should be a time for you to like explore and mess around Absolutely. and do like what you need. Like it's Absolutely. so. I was reading in a book one time. I really can't remember what book this was. That one. I feel like the book has now been like people don't like the, the author. Anyways, there was one that she was talking about sex and she was like, we weren't having frequent sex because I wasn't enjoying it. And so like it, we just, I didn't like it. And so we weren't having frequent sex. And so one day we were like, you know what, if we want to keep having sex more, I need to enjoy it more. And she's like, so we, me and my husband decided like, we are not going to finish like our time together until we have both orgasmed. And she's like, once we decided that we, I learned what I liked and sex Ooh. started getting better. And then we had sex all the time now because we had that agreement and and it was something that I looked forward to and wanted to do because I was enjoying it as well. So it didn't look like a chore anymore. It didn't feel like a chore because I enjoyed it. So like we decided like we're going to do that every time no matter what. And you know sometimes I feel like you get to a point where you're like, uh, this doesn't – maybe not isn't happening. But you at least felt good. So it can be different for everybody. But like I loved that. That changed like everything for me because there's sometimes where I'm just like wouldn't want to speak up because I know he's enjoying it. And then we just finish and be like that's it. And it's like no, no, no. This is for both of us to enjoy. And so I think having that goal with like every time you have sex you know where both of us are enjoying it you know and having an orgasm is like key you know it's so good and can lead to more frequent sex totally I totally agree with that and I think sometimes it's fun to have the attitude of like I'm gonna bring you to your knees tonight (laughs) yes oh no it totally is it's like oh absolutely like that just makes it so fun and also that being reciprocated is helpful yes. as well. So yeah. Totally. Again, the teammate, the teammate. But yeah, teammate, some nights yes. it's like, like I said, it's fun to be the initiator. It's fun to um, be like the one kind of like, yeah, like I feel like when it's your spouse, like you want that for them. And hopefully yes. your spouse reciprocates that. Like they want that for you. I know. Yeah. I think coconut is so smart. I personally have not been able to try it because my leg is broken, so I can't really do things on my knee. But I have it I got it in my mind. I'm like, once that knee is fixed, my I'm mind gonna try. When you walk back, you're gonna see my eyes go stool. You need a stool with no back. I do. I do. That's what I need. I need, you need a figure. low stool with no back. <laughs> You know, I have a squatty potty. Could we use the squatty Stop. potty? Is that what I do? Do I go get the squatty potty? <laughs> Not the squatty potty. Okay. <laughs> Tears are going out of my eyes. Thomas is going to listen to this and be like, where's the squatty potty? <laughs> Not okay. the squatty potty. I'm going to send you a link to um, a stool. <laughs> yes, please do. A oh, my God. Stool. Oh, man. I need it because I can't really bend in certain ways with my knee and my leg at the moment, but I'm sure I can at some point. But, yeah, I need a stool. I need something because we got to figure it out. I'm like, we talk about it all the time. I need to I see all your posts about it. I got to gotta try to that exper- out. You need to experience it. Yeah. No, another I thing, my first thing I checked when we started recording is to make sure the lube bottle is off the <laughs> That's 
so real. No, I have to watch that everywhere. I do like my podcast recording in my guest bedroom, which like the window is like out to the road. And I realized the other day that my dilators that I was using for like a video <laughs> were just like sitting on the counter and like the door, the window is open. And like you, you can see that there's a camera set up in here for my podcast. And I was like, these neighbors probably think I am some just like person on OnlyFans. Like they have no idea what's it's happening so up here. They, but it's, yeah, I'm just so pure, but they don't know that. <laughs> They're just like, That's so funny. Probably, Literally yeah, right next to me else. is my dresser. My dresser, the top left dresser holds my collection of vibrators that companies have sent me. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. <laughs> A lot of them are like the inserting ones too that I've never used, but they're like yep. worth a hundred dollars. I go, I can't just throw you in the trash. Oh, you can't throw that away. No, absolutely. You got to keep that because you, you, also you never know when the inspo is going to strike. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you just, Actually, you I, should, I should lock this up soon. My son's at the age. <laughs> what's no, I was about to say, he's about to walk in, like come into the kitchen. Mommy, what's this? Oh. He has absolutely gotten my dilators before. This was, I mean, he's still very young, but like he's definitely walked in and been like, huh? And I'm like, oh, mm, good. My. I'm like, this is actually a medical tool, but it still looks like something you shouldn't be holding and you absolutely should not be holding this. Like, absolutely. please do not. Yeah. Not, no, Luckily, my I, mean, I my parents have been in here where I'm like, walk in and I'm like, oh my, gosh, oh my, oh my gosh, my lips. <laughs> but it kind of looks like lotion. It's yeah. like an incognito. Like, yeah, it's like it's pretty. Like, they don't know unless they're like really looking at it, you know? Yeah. Because you like yeah. the co- coconut? coconut? I have not tried that one. I like um, Uber Lube. Okay, because I'm like yes. on the mod, which we on the mod. I'm like, yes, I need to try. I have your... talked about mod. I know oh. I've gotten some mod stuff. They've sent me a couple things before. I um, I I like their water based lube. Yeah. I don't remember which one that one is called, but I like their water based lube. But I really like their stuff. We used their condoms for a while, but then I found a different brand that I I like the skin brand, which I feel like you talked about before. Oh, but I I love think those. Yeah, let me see. I um, I asked like what are the best, and that was like the number one. I actually have it in my Target mm-hmm. cart right now. Do a Target. Yes, order no, you have to get it. No, the skin ones are by far the best we've tried, and I not no hate to mod i do yeah. love all their stuff i just like i and we use those for a while and my friend who has used those loves those more than anything so like those are hers i just tried the skin ones and it's a game changer like it really truly does not feel like he's wearing anything like wow I'm yeah like, order <laughs> yeah no you need to order like it really you cannot feel anything um which is what you want but yeah i've used the mod ones i want to try the coke Coconut, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, because I see people talk about it all the time. But we're just so like we love our Uber Lube and I've loved it for a million years. And it's like I, I should be trying stuff because that's like what I talk about. But I'm like once I like something, like I am right or die. Like I'm there yeah. till the end. So but I do want to try other things because that's fun, you know? Yeah. If it works, why why I oh my gosh, the lubes that are really? sticky. I've like bought oh. like non-toxic ones and they like stick. I'm like, this is causing yes. more friction. Like, yeah, you're like, that's not good. Or they only last for like blue? a second. I know. It's like, okay, I need this to be a little bit more long lasting. I'm not saying this, not saying that we, you know, go for a long time, but I need it to be a little bit longer lasting in that one, you know? Yeah, I know. Speaking of birth control, that's like another hot topic that, oh, it's oh like, gosh. it's so hard because again, I am so inexperienced. And then I went to the OBGYN and she was like, mm-hmm. I don't have the time to tell you. Like literally, it was, yeah. And um, so I've been like on a journey on Instagram of like asking people and ask them for their reviews, which it's almost worse because I get like two that are like, I love this. And then the rest are like, yes. I just died. And I'm I- like, yeah yeah that's the really hard part with birth control is that there's it truly 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 affects everybody differently like i feel like i've not one birth control that works perfectly for everybody like it truly yeah. does not i loved the nuva ring when i was on it and then once i got off of it i was like oh i actually have a personality now oh i'm not like irritable wow. anymore oh i'm not mean to people <laughs> not that i was ever mean but i felt like i i just i i didn't realize when i was on it how it was affecting me until i got off um but i i just like after that i was like i can't go back on so we're condoms which is not fun but it's just what we're doing for the moment you know I, yeah that's yeah. where we're at too yeah i'd you know, love to try an iud but i'm like terrified yeah I tried to get an IUD before we got married and they had to, I tried three times and could not insert it. And it was the oh. worst experience of my life. Yeah. Something about the way that like my cervix was shaped, they couldn't get it up in there. And they even used like a um, ultrasound machine to try and find it and they couldn't get it. And it was just, it was brutal. So I will not be trying that again. But if you want to try, I've heard great things about See? an IUD. <laughs> so there you go. It was just not for me, but I've also heard like not good things, but I, I feel like I've heard more positive about the copper one than the other one 
So yeah, I've heard like better stories about that one. That's but. like a whole ethical debate because like, I know. Yeah. Oh, I know. It's so, which I don't know what I feel about it, but I know. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely very, very hard. I think my, my overarching idea with birth control is that if God wants me to have a baby, he's going to make it happen. And birth control is not going to get in the way of that. Um, but yeah, there's so many pieces that go along with it. So yeah. Anyways, it. it would be yep. nice. Like it would be nice to have some free shooters. That'd be so fun. <laughs> I, know. I know. I did see recently though, that like male birth control is like going down the line of like getting more approved or something. I need to actually read the document. I just haven't had time to sit down and read it, but I've seen some like health art, health articles about like, it's actually people who've been in the trial have responded really well to it. So that's encouraging. Can you I would imagine? love that. Oh my gosh. In like, th- in like 30 years, our daughters are going to be like, what do you mean? Like men didn't have birth control then? We're like, I yeah, know. can you believe that? All yeah. women. It I was know. all on us. <laughs> yep. Always, always all on us. You know, I'm like, so ridiculous. I'm like, I make not. Thomas, like he keeps up with all that. Like make sure we have enough condoms and has all that. Cause I'm like, I'm not, I, I hate, I can't handle everything else. Okay. Well, not everything else. I love but, that. You know. I'm like, you can keep up with our, which he just did that. We didn't actually have like a conversation about it, but he's always been like, you know, on top of that, which is very nice. So yeah. What about, buying, what about buying condoms and pregnancy tests as a purity culture girly? Gosh. <laughs> You're like, here's about it. my condoms. Right. Here they are. You see, I am married. <laughs> right. It's like, do you see the this ring? Test. Right. You're like, I, this is a good thing, probably. Another thing with purity culture. Oh my gosh. I, I've not talked about this in a long time. I don't know if you have any experience with this, but when we first got married, there was my birth control was all messed up. And so I had a lot of pregnancy scares. And I have never felt more conflicted and guilty in my life for like being terrified to be pregnant. Like it was the oh. weirdest experience. Like I would have so many times where I'm like praying, like, Lord, please don't let me pregnant. But I know babies are a gift from you. So if I am pregnant, like, I, I know it's okay, but, like, please don't let me be pregnant. We can't afford it. We can't handle it. And, like, I literally had to talk in, in therapy about, like, h- how my struggles with that because I just felt so guilty because so many people can't get pregnant. But I also was just, like, this is not the time for us to get pregnant. It was just – it was so weird. My, it was so hard. My therapist, I remember she said to me, she's like, are you praying for your womb to be, like, permanently closed? And I was like, no. She was like, then you're fine. Like, it's fine. Like, yeah. these are okay prayers. But I just remember feeling so guilty about that. Anyways. Well, I feel like both those feeling, I mean, it can all exist in one space. One, it's yeah. your first kid. You don't even, you can't even fathom like what you're getting yourself into. So totally. it's, it's a whole other ball game when it's the first. Um, right. And then for me, it's like, I just don't like mentally during pregnancy and postpartum, like I am oh a my shell God. of myself. Oh, I, it, it's the worst. It's the worst. It's very hard. And you know, some of my friends, like I have a friend who has four kids. She just popped out her fourth unfazed. Wow. Oh, unfazed. I love that for her. Could not be me. It's so yeah. different from my experience. Yeah. So I have different. such like a scatterbrain. Um, and like, if I feel ill at all, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like <laughs> the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I lose all my personality. Like really oh, when I'm yeah. pregnant and postpartum, I'm oh, like, I'm not a person. I don't have a single thought, you know, nothing in my brain, yeah. literally nothing in my brain. Yeah. Well, I'm 17 months postpartum right now. I feel like I just came out of the fog and that's why yes. I feel like I've been like more active online and like my personality yeah, yeah. coming back. Right. It's like, you're finally a person again. No, truly. I, that could not be more relatable because we're talking about like when we want to have our second kid and I have been praying since the day that I gave birth that like my second experience will be significantly better than my first because the pregnancy again was horrible. And I mean, I'm so grateful for being pregnant. I just feel like I need to say that, but I, it was, it was just horrible. And I, again, was a shell of a person and I had the worst pregnancy and I just like the idea of doing it again is really hard, but I'm like, but we want more kids. So that's just what we're going to do. But I have just been literally praying like all the time. I'm like, Lord, please let this experience be different. Please let me just like have some more of my color and personality after I have this baby and that pregnancy will be better because yeah, I just, yeah. So I will hard. say my second time around was a lot smoother than my first time. That is good to know. I need to hear those things. So <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. And then I feel like too, just um like following your, I always tell myself, I'm like, how am I doing mentally? How are we doing financially? Like how are my, yes. how are my other kids doing? Like, I don't know. I just, I knew when we were ready, like, and I waited until he was three years old. So yeah, I waited like a good amount of time, but yeah. 
Right. No, I love that. I think about that a lot because we've talked about like age, age gap, which is always the question for everybody is like, what age gap is perfect? What is not, you know? And so, um, it's just, there's so many factors that go into it and we find finances is a big thing for us. Like if we're going to be able to just even afford to have another child. So, but I, I liked the idea of three years apart. That feels good. Um, we might do sooner depending on finance things, but who can say? And it's not happening back, anytime soon. Back to like getting accidentally pregnant before you expect. Um, I mm-hmm. feel like it is like this big fear, but like I'm like speaking to someone if they're in the situation, like the second you find out that baby's in your belly, like it is just I don't know, it opens you up to a different like realm of your brain that didn't know existed. And like yeah, you'll do whatever it takes for that baby. Like whatever it I takes. No questions I know it's, asked. I know it's scary and I didn't want to get pregnant before, like I, before we were like ready, Mm -hmm. but if I were to have, then just some encouragement of like, I don't know, just not that it's like a negative thing. You know what I mean? That, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like it's going to be okay. It seems really hard and scary right now, but it will be okay. And like, you'll make it through this and to lead into your resources that you have available for you, your friends, your family, doctors, like, cause you have to know that you're not alone and that getting help is okay. Yeah. And one day at a time and you'll see that baby and like, you'll, you're going to be obsessed. (laughs) Yeah. And like, you just lean in to what you lean into your intuition. Like I feel like so many people view babies as robots and like, they have to eat this time. They have to do this. And if they didn't gain this amount of weight, then you have to supplement with formula. I'm not hitting on formula, but it's just like, you have to do all these things if they don't like meet the certain milestone. It's like, no, a baby's not a robot. Like, you know, your baby best. Like if your baby looks happy and healthy, like you're fine, you know, like, you know your baby and what your baby needs. And if you're struggling to lean into that intuition, I totally understand because sometimes it's like, is this anxiety? Is this intuition? Like what? Like, I feel like I dealt yeah. with that a lot, but usually I feel like you kind of have like a gut feeling maybe. I know it's hard to explain because not everybody experiences that, but anyways, that's always yeah. my advice. Is like you one, know your baby. Totally. And one last thing on the parenting of like when you're going through pregnancy and it's so hard and then, like, when you have your baby in your arms, don't you wish you could go back and be like, I, could, I wish I could tell that girl at seven weeks pregnant, like, you're making Laney, like, just wait, like, yes. it's all going to be worth it. But, yes, yeah. it's all going to be worth it. Speaking of Laney, real quick, we'll end on this. Did you decide her middle name? <laughs> no. If you've been around, if you've been following Kristen for a, for a long time, this is like a deep cut. You will understand that question. But have <laughs> you, you have not decided her middle name. I have it. And here's the story. So I had a middle name, but um, it was a family name, but it was used by someone else. And so the whole time <gasps> I was trying to avoid using, not it, like already beforehand. Oh, so okay. Yeah. I was trying to avoid using this name, but I felt like it was the right name. Um, mm-hmm. So anyway, so we get in the hospital. It's like four in the morning. I was like asleep on the bed like this. And like, I get a call from the hospital and they're like, we're doing her, her birth certificate. Like what's her middle name? Because and I was like, have to do that at 4am because that's the time to do that. Yeah. You know what? Maybe looking back, maybe it wasn't 4 a.m. I don't know. I was just like, but, no, but any, anyways, it's just like, you know, okay, so they call you, they ask. So I look at Shane, I'm like, they need to know our middle name right now. And we're like, oh my gosh. So my son's middle name is Shane after my husband. And then we had like, it was like raining and like our nurse had made a comment about rain. So I was like, Lainey Rain, R A Y N E. And then like, we went to our first appointment and I saw it written on paper. I was like, no, that's not <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> The R, there was something there. So then we've been on a journey. She's 17 months. I have a lot of options. I still don't know what it is. I also want to make it just like her first and last name, but um, it's yeah. still interesting. A top contender right now is Jolie. So that I could, mm-hmm. so her initials would be L O or sorry, <laughs> Jolie. So it'd be like Lainey Joe. And then like, oh, yes, that's so cute. But I'd also love an O name so that her initials could be L O L. LOL. So. That's also so iconic though. Not going to lie. Like LOL would be so iconic. Right. But I just had, I was wondering, I was thinking, I randomly thinking about that the other day. I was like, I wonder if lady has a middle name. <laughs> a middle name. That's so weird. I don't know. I just had a hard time finding what meshed with her. Naming a child is the hardest thing that I feel like you'll ever do in your, in your life. Like that, cause that's their name forever. And we only liked one boy name. So when we get pregnant again, I really, really, really want a girl. But if we have another boy, Like, that would be great, but he's just going to not have a name. Like, I couldn't (laughs) tell you. Like, he's just not going to have a name because I couldn't believe I found the name that I liked, and that was Tate, but 
he's so just not gonna have cute. it anyway. so, so cute. anyways well thank you so so much for being on the podcast today this was such a fun conversation i absolutely have to have you back on because we have to do the like things that we wish we knew beforehand just like all the like dirty details of stuff that that you need to pee after you have sex that you need to bring a towel because sex is me- messy like sometimes it comes out of you and if you aren't sure what that means <laughs> we'll talk about it on the, on that episode but i have to have you back for us to talk about that um so we'll definitely do that but thank you so much for being on where can people find you um and like your content and stuff um mostly yeah instagram i'm on tiktok lately instagram mm-hmm. is where we get into the nitty gritty yes. nothing is off limits it's just girl talk yeah. all the Four time degrees. Oh yeah. My DMs, you can DM me anything. I get the diarrhea stories. I get get all, and that is the vibe of my page. It's like, Hey, we're, it's just girly things. Diarrhea. (laughs) Yes. Girly things. I love it. That's the place. It's truly for the girlies. So I will link that in the episode notes and I'll also link your TikTok too. I recently decided I was going to start posting on TikTok, but I'm just posting like the podcast clips that I have, I think, because TikTok ter- terrifies me. People are so mean on TikTok. And I've already had like some mean comments. On, I've obviously gotten mean comments on Instagram, but for some reason, they're just more brutal on TikTok. But I need to do it. Like, I need to, it just needs to happen, whatever. So we'll yep. see. We'll see how it goes. I so, like two videos I posted, people have been nice. So I'm just <laughs> yes. hoping it goes that way. TikTok is scary. I feel like I could just keep going and going, like talking with you. I'm like trying to, like, okay, hold that in, hold that in. <laughs> I know, I know. We could literally record for truly hours. Like this has been, this has been the best. We're so in sync with so many things, which I just love. So yeah, thank you thank for you. having. Me. That was so yes. fun. Thank you for coming on. And you guys have to go follow her, like, for all the girly content, especially her reels. They are truly hysterical. Like, I can't explain to you how funny she is. And just the girly talks and the mom things. And it's just a good time over on her Instagram. So go follow her. Go try Coconut. Let her know your thoughts on it. You know, send her her your your five-star review for Coconut (laughs) once you experience it. And I'll go get my my stool and my squatty potty. So squatty potty. It's time tonight. (laughs) It's time tonight. I'm so Thomas is literally gonna edit this today and be like okay squatty pot like, I'm gonna get in bed tonight and he's gonna have the squatty potty he has like the Clorox wipes he's disinfecting it like yes, all right you, you, we gotta disinfect that thing you know so he's getting get ready get there. oh I'm crying okay well thank you so much for listening to today's episode friends we will talk soon